Welcome to The Angel in the Asylum, an exhibition at the Whittingham Collection centred on ideas of female madness from Victorian times to the present day. The exhibition explores how narratives of female madness reflect the evolution of psychiatry and the perception of sanity. This audio guide accompanying the exhibition gives more information on each of the six paintings in the gallery, beginning with the painting to your left as you enter the exhibition hall. We hope you enjoy your visit. Firstly, we have a painting from 1887 by Brouillet of the great neurologist Charcot demonstrating a female hysteric to a crowd of male medical students at the Salpetriere Hospital in Paris. The female hysteric is particularly dishevelled and dishabillée and she's seen more as an object to be looked at by the men rather than a human being. Charcot uh, demonstrated hysterics by inducing a sort of trance in them. He was famous for using hypnosis and he used the power of suggestion to create hysterical symptoms in these women, um, which he used as proof of his theory of the four stages of hysteria. Women, therefore, who were deemed to be exhibiting symptoms in any of these four stages, such as seizures or paralysis, really any kind of neurological symptom, could be labelled as hysterics. Uh, Freud was one of Charcot's pupils, but his theory of hysteria was considerably different. Um, in Charcot's time, hysteria was seen as an inherently female disease, as an excess of female characteristics, a sort of femininity gone to extremes, whereas Freud was more inclined to see hysteria as the remnants of a past trauma, and by talking about that trauma, um, as he demonstrated with his patients such as Anna O, oh, the symptoms could be relieved. The second painting is the final instalment of Hogarth's series The Rake's Progress, where the main character reaches his ultimate decline by being imprisoned in Bedlam Hospital. This is an asylum that was particularly brutal at the time. Uh, the inhabitants had to sleep on hay and regular spectator tours were run to come and gawp at the mad people, as it were. Often the women who were imprisoned in asylums, such as Bedlam, were those who didn't conform to social and gender norms of the time. Women were expected to be very chaste and those who were overtly sexual in any way were often seem to be crazy. Uh, an example of this is Bertha Mason in Jane Eyre, who is fairly animalistic and overt in her sexuality, and she is the archetypal madwoman of the Victorian era. Uh, she is seen as a, an alien species. The first incarnation of psychiatrists were in fact called alienists. The third painting depicts Pennell, a neurologist in the 19th century, uh, freeing some women in the Salpetria from their mechanical restraint. Prior to him, uh, madness was seen as a degenerative condition, as uh, an inherited condition that couldn't be cured in any way. And Pinnell uh, initiated something called moral management, where he gave the uh, inhabitants of the hospital something to do with their time, something to focus on, and he thought that this would be curative, and that was actually the beginning of therapeutic asylums. However, this didn't continue throughout time as the asylums became too overcrowded and uh, eventually moral management declined. The Victorian ideal of femininity, or the angel in the house, as was the cliched phrase at the time, uh, is depicted in painting four by Charles Westcope in his painting Mother and Child. The mother in this painting depicts a kind of secular Madonna. She is desirable and yet undesiring. The Victorians did not like to acknowledge that women had any kind of sexual desire at the time, and yet hysteria was still thought to be cured by pelvic massage performed by a willing physician until the woman reached hysterical paroxysm. These euphemistic terms demonstrate the Victorian unwillingness to acknowledge any kind of sexuality in women. This is part of the reason that, as demonstrated in Figure 5, if a woman was fallen, uh, this was seen to be irreparable. Uh, this is a painting of a fallen woman returning home to her family and being rejected as an outsider, as the painting's title describes. 
This is similar to the way that mental illness was also seen as incurable. And Foucault, in his book Madness and Civilization, uh, describes the concept that both the mentally ill and fallen women, such as prostitutes, are seen as deviants who are separated from society, and this is the reason that they're incarcerated. The final painting in this gallery is Lang's The Invalid, uh, which shows a woman who has been prescribed bed rest. The rest cure was a cure invented by Silas Weir Mitchell, an American 19th century physician, uh, who prescribed that women ought to stay in bed without any kind of intellectual stimulation and that would cure their hysteria or their other mental illness. The antiquated idea behind the rest cure was that the blood flow needed to be re-diverted back to the reproductive organs and therefore needed to be taken away from the brain and therefore the women could not have any intellectual stimulation. Silas Weir Mitchell prescribed this treatment to Charlotte Perkins Gilman uh, he was a 19th century author who wrote a short novel called The Yellow Wallpaper describing this treatment and its ill effects. Uh, this treatment was also prescribed for Virginia Woolf. Woolf satirised the treatment's inefficacy in her novel Mrs Dalloway. Silas Weir Mitchell was not known to be particularly respectful to the women he was treating. He's been quoted as saying, if you're not out of that bed within five minutes, then I'll get into it with you. And the woman he was talking to reluctantly got out of bed when he started removing his trousers. Virginia Woolf and Charlotte Perkins Gilman were both critics of the ideal of the angel in the house. Charlotte Perkins Gilman in particular described her as being dead as the dodo. It seems clear that both of these women found it difficult to fit into the social norms that were expected of them in their particular eras and were therefore labelled with having mental illness. This analysis is relevant to modern psychiatry because it calls into question what the role of the psychiatrist should be. Is it solely to protect the interests of the women or is it also to protect the interests of society? It also highlights the difficulties with giving people labels of mental illness that are seemingly encompassing their entire personality rather than an external disorder which can be cured, which is relevant to diagnoses such as personality disorder which can be incredibly stigmatising. Therefore, there are ways in which this analysis of the history of female madness can be beneficial to modern psychiatry. We hope you have enjoyed this exhibition.